Hello and welcome to the next Ulukoza Retro Game Review video. And that should give you a pretty good clue as to what this one is. Yep, it is Lotus III, the ultimate challenge. So the third of the Lotus games, it was inevitable that I was going to cover this, having already done the first two. Surely didn't think I was just going to leave it at the, the two and not bother with the final one. So this was released by Gremlin Graphics in 1992. As we have a demo mode starting up here. Let's get out of the demo and take us back to uh, the actual main uh, option screen. So uh, as you can see. It's set up very much like uh, Lotus 2. So anyway, let's get back on to the actual intro part. So uh, yes, this was released in 1992 by Grenin Graphics, written again by uh, Magnetic Fields, which is uh, Sean Southern and the other bloke whose name I can never remember. Now, there are a few changes here, not many. Uh, unfortunately, one of them is that the option to link the two computers together, the uh, two Amigas, doesn't seem to be here anymore. I wish it was, but it isn't. There you go. Now, there is also a, a constructor mode, so you can alter, uh, change, you know, alter uh, circuits and that and create your own. I've not had a look at this, I've not used it properly, so... Yeah. Uh, obviously you can still have uh, the code to uh, start a particular level. Then there's the uh, define option here. Yeah, you tell me what any of that fucking means. I am not a clone. Doesn't look particularly uh, user friendly or newcomer friendly or anything like that. So Anyway, so we have a selection of uh, courses. So it's the easy, the intermediate, uh, the hard courses. Or we can just have circuits. Or we can have a, what I'm assuming is a random uh, selection. Um, I'll just uh, keep it at the uh, easy one for the sake of this video. And then the game type, so we can have like time trials or some sort of championship. Again, I'll keep it at time trials. So let's get a game underway. Uh, when this starts, we see uh, another uh, change, or rather an addition, which is a new car. So we can have, uh, well, let's, let's show you the first two. So obviously the uh, the S3 here, the Turbo SE. Uh, as you can see, as far as speed and acceleration go, it is the best. Uh, its handling, though, is not so fantastic. Then we have the uh, Elan. That's back again. So handling is great, uh, speed and acceleration are not as good as the uh, Esprit. And perhaps rather predictably, the new car, the M200, is a sort of middle of everything uh, as far as its uh, handling, acceleration and speed go. Uh, as far as brakes go, they do look pretty good, but like just about everybody else, I never use the brakes. So, seeing as this is the new car in the game, we'll use this one. And then that brings us to uh, the ability to select the music, just like the... F was it the first or second one? Fuck it, I can't even remember now. So, yeah, we can choose uh, yeah, whichever track we want. Yeah, it gives us a brief... Uh, actually, it plays through the whole track if you really want to. Or, if you are like me, you don't want music, you want the uh, sound effects, just select those. So here we go then, our first race is at the course 30. And on this particular circuit, you get the impression that Sean Southern has taken a bit of a trip back in time. You look at this checkerboard effect and you think, am I playing fucking Trailblazer here? And, um, well, we'll just carry on going for a bit. And 
suddenly we've entered the turbo zone with uh, some different coloured uh, squares. We are back in fucking uh, Trailblazer. So the, the, the first level, to be honest, I think is a bit silly, uh, making it as a hybrid between uh, you know, the, the, the first Lotus game, the first two, and Trailblazer. I mean, all right, they are two games that have become, you know, Sean Southern classics, but I don't think we really need to have the two amalgamated into one title. Now, for this game, I'm playing this on an Amiga 1200. It's not an AGA title, but um, there has been... They, what you saw that white flash there, that actually is a laser that's being shot across the road and if your car hits it, it uh, slows you down. Don't ask me, I'm just telling you what it is. Uh, anyway, as I was going to say, um, the graphics have been overhauled and there are now a, lo a lot more uh, graphics on the side of the road. And because of that, this game does run a bit slow on an Amiga 500. Uh, with the uh, Amiga 1200, no such problems. You get some really good frame rates still and the game plays great. Uh, in fact, that's the only downside to this game. It's, uh, yeah, if it wasn't so sluggish on the Amiga 500, I, I you know, it, it would be fine, but unfortunately it is. Um, it's really about the only area where I could mark this game down. Playing this game on Amiga 1200, this is the best of the series. Um, but yeah, playing it on Amiga 500, it's just too slow. I swear this this music is fucked up somewhere. Surely that drum sound isn't meant to be like that. Anyway, let's get on to uh, track two. No, yeah, we choose the uh, music again. So again, I, I always use sound effects. If you have music playing, there's no sound effects at all. So this course is uh, Zunkiuskas-80. It's a great circuit out. I think it's somewhere in the Czech Republic or something. Now this is a rally uh, stage. And with rally stages, you have almost no fucking grip at all. The actual road itself is also quite narrow. And uh, one change that I wish had been brought in for... Uh, this game but hasn't is that the fucking weaving cars are still there uh, in fact you you may be thinking already that there isn't a vast amount here that's different from uh, the second uh, Lotus game and you'd be right there isn't a vast amount um, look much like I said with the uh, my review of Lotus 2 Basically, what Sean Sutton has done has changed what he felt needed to be changed and left what was good alone. Now, that was great with Lotus 2. It meant that there were plenty of changes, but, you know, it still had all the good stuff there. With this, um, it means that there hasn't been a great deal that has been changed because Lotus 2 was already fucking properly decent uh, already so he didn't have an awful lot to do as far as implementing changes basically we've got we've got uh, some new circuits some new surfaces such as this you know new tracks and that uh, we've got a new car the M200 that I'm using here and that is largely about it uh, the speech is no longer in the game although I don't mind that because the, the speech wasn't that important and what was there we had uh, you know at the start marks set go that just does not sound right for fucking motor racing so yeah just having the uh, 
uh, the, the audible signal and the lights going out, that, that, that works better. I prefer that. So fucking hell, I'm coming to a grinding halt here. This is the last uh, stage of this uh, track. Now, I've only had one warm-up go and I got to the very last fucking stage. So, yeah, when it calls this selection easy, it's not joking. So there we go, got to the finish there with 23 seconds left on the clock. I think you get yeah 10,000 bonus for each second you have left on the uh, clock there, so that's not bad. So we're already up to 3,892,020. Uh, I've done two races. So, right, again, it's just sound effects. If, if it was like Outrun, as we approach course of Kusnapabukum-70, uh, but yeah, if it was like uh, Outrun, and it had, you know, music and effects, great. But unfortunately it doesn't. If you have music, that's all you can hear. So with this one then we have the fog, so rather like the snow levels in um, uh, Lotus 2, this means we have greatly reduced visibility. We have these fucking irritating weaving cars, which are just... Okay, I know... I know they are fucking irritating, but fuck me, I haven't had to put up with them being as irritating as that before. should still get through this uh, course okay. There are a lot of very long straights on this course, presumably because your vision is extremely limited. You can't see very far ahead at all. So um, they decided that uh, you know that was challenge enough. They didn't want you going around some twisty fucking uh, course while also having to deal with not being able to see too far ahead. Okay now. Again, like Lotus 2, if you do hit something, which, you know, you will, whether you, you know, no matter what you do, you, you're going to hit something. Uh, it doesn't punish you too much, so you are able to still carry on with the fucking race. So really, the, the differences between say this and Lotus 2 are very very slight it is just uh, some graphical enhancements and even they are largely limited to uh, roadside graphics um, uh, new courses and a slight tweaking of the uh, title uh, page and the main options page and of course the uh, I guess you can call it like a course construction kit, but it does not look very user friendly to me. I've never actually tried to use it because I wouldn't have a fucking clue where to begin. Now you see what I mean about this, this particular course being mostly straights. So it's not the most difficult or the most challenging of uh, racetracks. Not all of the uh, <laughs> tracks are uh, point to point like they are in Lotus 2. There are some uh, circuits so you get a mixture of the two. For example track one that I did with the uh, Trailblazer sort of hybrid that that's a circuit you had to do three laps. Uh, later on you get more uh, circuit races. The final uh, event is a circuit race you have to do 13 laps and I ran out of time on the uh, final lap and I could see the fucking finish line in front of me that rather pissed me off <laughs> alright so we're on to the final stage of this one plenty of time so the, the easy level really is easy it's I guess it's just a way to sort of like gently ease you into the game. Of course, if it was a modern game, this would be the difficult level. But then again, if this was a modern game, uh, 
I would have had to have paid extra to use the car that I'm in. Anyway, I don't really want to be comparing this to modern gaming. So, there we go, another level completed. I forgot that I drank my tea. So, 5.6 million after three uh, courses. We go on to the next one. So race four of seven, so this one, this is fairly long, 10 kilometer course over four stages, but it is point to point again. This one, there is a, a crosswind that occasionally picks up, and when it does, it starts blowing you across the road. So yeah, you gotta watch out for that. So yeah, it's blowing me there. I'm I mean, I guess it's certainly a novel idea. You never saw anything like that in, uh, you know, Outrun, etc. That's right, gonna, I say, leap that turn, but yeah, you can see. Saw it, but he uh, blowing me towards the uh, slide again. Fuck it out. And this wind just keeps on picking up. So uh, by the time we get to the, the, the final stage of uh, this course, it's not quite a uh, constant, but it's, it's not far off it. The only thing that is a bit weird is that it doesn't matter which. Uh, the corners you go round, um, the wind direction is always blowing across the road, which doesn't make a great deal of sense. I mean, it's as if the wind direction is following you uh, <laughs> as you go round the course. But, I mean, that's just a minor thing. It's no big deal. Okay, so I think it's going to start. Uh, Okay, it sounded like the wind was going to pick up, but it's, uh, oh no, here it comes. I'm on an extremely long straight here, but there we go, it's starting to blow me across the, uh, oh, then stopped, so. Oh, fuck. There we go, yeah, blowing me way across the fucking, uh, road now. I thought because that car was kind of shooting past me, I thought it was an Esprit, but it looks like it's another M200. That is definitely an M200 there, that sort of brownish thing, or beigey, or whatever fucking colour it is. It's off white anyway. So, uh,. Well, let's get the review underway then. Uh, the presentation is okay. Uh, it does do one of my pet hates, which is that this game comes on two discs, but it does not use uh, any external drives. It only uses DF0. Uh, but at least uh, there's no disc changing while playing the game. You just change disc when... Uh, uh, the game first loads, but even before it gets to the title page, it asks for disc, uh, disc 2. There we go, 10 laps for this one. I think this is, uh, yeah, this is the one that's on the side of the uh, cliff here. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the presentation is uh, none too bad. Uh, graphics, well, this uh, particular circuit clearly shows how there have been a lot more uh, graphics on the uh, side, uh, the roadside added. You can also quite clearly see that they have been done in the same style of the old Sega Wyboard uh, arcade games, insofar as to look, well, they've used like loads of flat 2D images to create like a 3D effect like the Sega Wideboard games, I don't think it 
really works. But, uh... Yeah, nevertheless, here it is. I mean, the problem is that, uh... You know, all these different layers... It doesn't look right. You drive When you're driving past a, uh... You know, driving along like you know, the side of a cliff. It's just one long cliff face, you know, it's not a load of individual sort of flat pieces all coming past you. I mean it was starting to look dated in you know eighty eight or whatever, whenever Sega released uh Afterburner. That fucking heap of shit. So, you know, by 92, it was really dated. So, I can only assume it was done because, you know, I guess fans of OutRun would have been among the first to, to buy this. So, it was done to, uh, you know, remind them of uh, OutRun. That's pure guesswork on my part. I don't know if that is the reason. But there is a sort of air of logic about it. Uh, as far as uh, right, the rest of the graphics, the cars all look great, but then they always have done from, you know, the first Lotus game. And the, uh, it certainly plays fast, you know, the, the road routine is well done. It moves at a good rate, or at least it does on the Mega 1200, so on, on a 500, especially on tracks like this one, it does slow down a bit. Right, not a bit, quite a lot. Uh, the only change I really wish that they had brought in, but didn't, is sorting out those fucking weaving cars. They are the biggest annoyance of the entire uh, Lotus series. But, uh, I guess by the time Lotus 3 came along, they were almost a fucking trademark feature, so everyone was expecting them. Surely, though, even if they were expecting them, did people actually want them? I, I find that hard to believe. We'll put it this way, I sure as fuck didn't want them. It's the only thing in the game that I don't like. Fucking hell. Uh, then there's uh, right, audio. Well, the, the sound effects are exactly the same as they have been in the first and second one. Again, if they were good enough in those two, there's really no need to change them, I guess that's the attitude that uh, they took with this. No point in changing the sound effects because they're good enough. The music is okay. Um, I haven't listened to a lot of it. There's, there are quite a few other pieces of music in this game which I've never listened to because I, I want to be able to hear, you know, the, the car. Uh, I want to hear the revs so I know I have an indication of how fast I'm going without actually having to look up at the revometer. Um, and also, of course, know if I've hit something like fucking hell. Like there. Um, and yeah, yeah, if you, if you have the music playing uh, during uh, the actual level you can't hear any sound effects at all, which I don't like, and I'm sure it could have been done, because, I mean, these these effects are pretty simple, and by the sounds of it, they are all one channel. So why couldn't you have, you know, used three channels for the fucking music? But no, you've got one or the other, but you can't have both, which makes no sense at all, especially in a 92 game.
So finally then the gameplay, um, it plays great, and no two ways about it, it's, uh, it plays every bit as good as uh, Lotus 2. Yes it does have some irritations, which is basically the weaving uh, cars and that is it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a great uh, arcade racing game if you're playing it on an Amiga 1200. Playing it on an Amiga 500, you would probably say, "Fuck this! I'm going to stick with Lotus 2." In fact, therein lies a bit of a problem because yes, okay, this game is great, but the uh, the, the actual step up. Well, the step up from the first Lotus game to Lotus 2, there was a considerable amount of uh, changes which really improved things. The step up from Lotus 2 to this, this next one is quite a short race. Uh, but yeah, the step up between this, you know, between Lotus 2 and this is very, very small. Um, and if you had Lotus 2, the chances are that uh, on getting this, you're probably thinking, wow, there's not a lot here that I, I hadn't already got in uh, the first game, or the second game rather. Uh, so, you may not have been quite so impressed. Uh, I mean, yes, it is the best game in the Lotus series, but by a very slight margin, because it is just so similar to uh, Lotus 2. And if you had an Amiga 500, um, you would be playing this at much slower frame rates and you'd be hard pressed to, to, to figure out why. I mean this, you know, is so similar to uh, Lotus 2 and of course you could play that with, at, at fantastic uh, frame rates. So, yeah, Amiga 500 owners probably felt a bit hard done by, you know, playing a game that looks, for the most part, and certainly sounds, uh, no, very, 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 very similar to uh, Lotus 2, but the frame rates have uh, nosedived. So I'm up to uh, 11 million as we uh, approach the final uh, course of uh, the easy level. So yes, 13 laps. And last time I played this one, so I was on lap 13 and the finish line was about that far away and my time ran out and I couldn't fucking... <laughs> yeah, I was not a happy camper. So how do I rate it? Well, if you're playing it on an Amiga 500, it will get marked down quite a bit. So, um, we're playing it here with the uh, Amiga 1200 setup, ignoring the fact that you know people most likely bought Lotus 2 only a year earlier, and then get this game, which is very, very, very similar. Um, having shelled out, you know, another 30 quid only to get a game that is, yeah, this fucking similar. Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll ignore that because, I mean, the game is great. So I was on a uh, Amiga 1200, I'll score it 9 out of 10. On an Amiga 500, fuck it, I'm, in case you hadn't already been able to tell, I'm fucking shit on this. Uh, on the Amiga 500, I would rate it 7 out of 10, so it loses 2 points for uh, the bad performance on Amiga 500. That's quite a, uh, that is quite an impact. But I mean, 7 out of 10 does not mean it's a bad game. It is just a much better game on the 1200. Frankly, if you if you only have an Amiga 500 
I would ignore this game and stick with Lotus 2. So I've got the time up to 99. But, uh, I'll, I'll yeah, yeah. <laughs> doing shit like that, I just, why do I have to make this 13 fucking laps, it goes on for a fucking age, but I'm determined to actually finish, so, uh, it means you're going to have to put up with watching me doing this for 13 fucking laps. I mean, constantly hitting the, uh, you know, everything on the roadside isn't quite so annoying. It's hitting the cars that fucking annoys me. Especially when they then start weaving about right in front of you and always end up weaving in the direction that you uh, take to try and get round them. So they are, they really do fucking piss you off. I mean, how long, see, I've, I've been trying to overtake that fucking yellow car for ages. Now, another yellow car's here, and then there's the white one that passed me beforehand. So now I've got this fucking weaving cunt here. Okay, right, so I got past him. But now it's a... Oh, fucking hell! I wouldn't mind, but I, I think I'm only just about halfway. Oh yeah, I like the way that that car just manages to go through all of the uh, obstructions completely unimpeded. I was not aware that that happened. Okay, well in that case this game is going to be marked down a bit for that, so... Right, on the Amiga 1200 then this gets 8.5 out of 10, and on the, the 500 this gets 6.5 out of 10. Because that is just cuntish. If you're being, uh, you know, if you are affected by all the uh, obstacles on the road, the other cars should be as well. But they're not. They just drive through it no problem. That's, no. Nah. No, you can't fucking do that. I fucking hate this track. <laughs> At the end of this, I think I've still got four maps. Yeah, you know, I've got four more fucking laps to do. Yeah, that yellow cunt's come back again. Come on. Two more laps after this one. Oh, fuck's sake! An ultimate lap. I've just noticed actually this has given me virtually fuck all time. Oh, 
But in that case, I, I really don't, especially the way I've been fucking hitting everything, like that fucking car there and all the roadside obstacles. There's no way I'm going to get around the final lap. I'll be amazed actually if I get around this one. Okay, so I've got round here, final lap, I've got 21 seconds to get round here, no fucking chance. No wonder I couldn't fucking uh, get round it uh, when I had my warm-up go. So this will be my final lap, there you go, look, s six seconds, I've done worse here than I did the first one. But, you know, my warm-up attempt, there we go. And that fucking car alarm has started again. So 12.3 million is my uh, final uh, score. There you go. So then that is uh, Lotus 3, the ultimate challenge. Um, yeah, 8.5 out of 10 if you're playing it on a Mega 500, uh, Mega 1200. Six and a half out of ten if you're playing it on an Amiga 500. Uh, that brings this review to an end. And we'll see you at the next one.